Good morning, everyone, and um, welcome, a very warm welcome to uh, Dubai Oracle Open World. This year, we are actually celebrating more than 30 years of history for Oracle in the UAE. So we have a very, very long history here, and we are actually very honored that more than 8,000 enterprises in the region are putting their trust into us every day. And clearly, we are very committed to continue to bring the latest technologies, our latest technologies in the Middle East. As you know, Dubai is one of the fastest growing cities in the world. It is actually the first country that has appointed a state minister for artificial intelligence. And in three years, we know that half of the government transactions will be using blockchain. So that's quite amazing. But what I find is even more amazing are projects of the nature of the first Hyperloop track. I don't know if you realize, but this thing will transport people between Dubai and Abu Dhabi at a speed of 1,000 kilometers per hour. So that is pretty amazing. You know, what used to take, or what is taking today, two hours, Dubai to Abu Dhabi, will be done tomorrow in 10 minutes. The innovation is actually so great that we decided to open the Zayed Innovation Hub in Dubai uh, a year ago. And clearly, a lot is happening here, and to the point where it is hard for us and myself to keep up. Now, our objective is really for us to carve a path for our customers to understand what technology can do for them. And in particular, it's all about gaining intelligence from data in order for you to address and resolve business problems. What we believe is that data will help solve some, some, of, the comp some of the societies, some of the planet's biggest challenges. Things such as finding solutions to the limited water resources, or things such as making cities healthier by cutting air pollution. So today and tomorrow, you will be hearing a lot about the Oracle Cloud. What you need to know is that behind the Oracle Cloud, the defining technology is autonomous. Last year, we introduced the first autonomous database. It is self-driving, self-securing, self-repairing, and what it does, or the autonomous technologies in general, they are embedding machine learning and artificial intelligence. So what they allow you to do is really to automate manu manual tasks and to eliminate, by doing that, a lot of the human errors, to improve security and really reduce the risk of data loss. Doing that, we are helping you focus on what's more important for you, which is to drive growth and innovation in your respective organizations. In the future, very clearly, we will bring more services to our cloud, and we will deliver the first truly automated cloud. We've actually designed our cloud to be fully integrated, we have a complete stack with the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Generation 2 as really the infrastructure, the autonomous database as the middle tier, and sitting on the top, a set of applications in the areas of ERP, human capital management, or customer experience, together with some analytics, all in one place, and working seamlessly together. 
And what each product does is that it benefits from this capability of the underlying platform. It is really designed around the users and their needs, giving them better experience while lowering costs and improving productivity. But it's not just about the integration of our own cloud. We recently announced two partnerships. One of the partnerships is with Microsoft, where you can run one part of your workload on Azure and the other part on the Oracle Cloud. Another one of these partnerships is with VMware, where we can run their workloads on our cloud. And all these partnerships are about one thing. They are about giving you greater choice and more flexibility than you've ever had before. At Oracle, we've been going through our own transformation. We consider that it's no longer enough to deliver you a product. We are now a full-service technology provider, and what matters to us is to deliver you with an exceptional experience. We really want to be a partner that takes you where you want to go. One that will stay on your side in the good times, but also in the bad times, like we've been doing for the past 30 years. Because we know that the happier our customers are, the better for us and the better for you. It's that simple. So what I'd like to uh, leave you today with now is a video of an amazing customer. They are called Hospital 573537. They are based in Cairo, and what they do every day is just incredible. What they do is to save children's lives. I'm so proud to be part of their wonderful mission. Thank you for your time, and I wish you have a good event. The Egyptian healthcare system is a national medical insurance system, like so many countries in the entire world, and it has its own challenges. Treating children cancer, we need better resources, better equipment to give those kids a better chance. Hospital 57357 is the largest children cancer hospital in the world, and it's based in Cairo. The hospital is 100% funded by donations. Patients are treated free of charge. We are a very busy hospital. We have a total number of 15,000 new cases since we started in 2007. Since day one, technology was part of the infrastructure of the hospital. Oracle is managing all the non-medical resources, human resource, the financial resources, all the supply chain, and the role of technology is far beyond efficiency. We believe that technology can make our children's life better. احنا عايشين في السودان بس احنا هناك اكتشفنا انه مرهم عندها كانسر في العض من اول ما عرفنا هناك اول ما جينا المستشفى 57 بداوا على طول علاج كيماوي وبعد كده العمليه مرهم دلوقتي بتاخذ في جرعه كيماوي وان شاء الله بعدها حيكون فاضل لنا جرعه واحده وبكده بنكون باذن ربنا خلصنا مرحله ممكن اقول صعبه هي صعبه شوي يعني I think cancer is not just a problem of the child, it's a family problem. It, it affects all the family. It's not just providing the medical treatment, it's providing the full environment for those kids to go through the treatment journey happily. When I come to the hospital, I want to go to the workshop and draw and draw. I want to go نعم سكلورا والقلم وعد أرسم ولون بحس إنه زي طلعت اللي بوايك.
I really love my job, I love my work, and I love working with these children. You are making really a difference, and you see the results. هي في كلام مختصر عبارة عن إن المستشفى بعد ربنا إنقاذ لحياة مريهم بجد. This is exactly what's happening in this hospital every day. I feel personally that what's happening in this hospital for those kids is a miracle. Please welcome H.G. Mohamed Gaya. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Your Excellencies, esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you all. It's my pleasure to be here today at the Oracle Open World Middle East Conference, an event that continues to attract innovative minds from across the region and the world. I would like to thank the organizers for convening this gathering of experts and leaders and for inviting me to address you all here today. Oracle Open World represents a great opportunity for collaboration and the exchange of ideas on what works in today's digital world. These discussions are invaluable in an era dominated by progressive technological innovations. The event also provides a platform for highlighting key achievements in digital transformation in Abu Dhabi and the United Arab Emirates. The Abu Dhabi Digital Authority performs a fundamental role in driving the digital future of Abu Dhabi in accordance with our wise leadership's vision to become a leading regional hub for digital innovation. Through our efforts, we seek to further establish the United Arab Emirates capital as a vital global destination for business and investment. ADDA's mandate entails that we build a safe and reliable digital ecosystem to support the development of Abu Dhabi's digital government services. This commitment has resulted in a range of projects and initiatives that wouldn't be possible without the assistance of our partners from both the private and government sectors. One of our most popular initiatives is TEM, a first of its kind innovative government services platform that offers a seamless experience in a unified one-stop shop for all of Abu Dhabi's government services. At ADDA, we believe that data is a business asset that is key to unlocking tomorrow's solutions of machine learning, neural networks, and real-time analytics. Our Abu Dhabi data management program was created to develop a new government-wide data platform built with an open data sharing ecosystem in mind. Furthermore, our Abu Dhabi Spatial Data Infrastructure Program facilitates the sharing and leveraging of Abu Dhabi's vast geospatial data among government bodies and the private sector, using it to empower and enhance multiple solutions and services that our citizens use every day. Beyond data, artificial intelligence also continues to make a significant impact, both on businesses, government, and citizens' lives likely. Taking into consideration AI's increasing role, the authority has launched the ADDA AI Lab, ADDA's AI Lab, offering a platform for Abu Dhabi's government entities dedicated to developing innovative digital solutions using artificial intelligence and machine learning. These strategic activities make our partnership with Oracle a valuable and a mission-critical one. We have been collaborating with Oracle to accelerate the implementation of digital solutions throughout the Emirates. Part of the result of our partnership has been Oracle building its new cloud data center in the United Arab Emirates, offering public cloud application services to citizens and residents in the UAE and other select areas in the Middle East. Oracle's cloud solutions play a crucial role in building the country's digital capacity through education and advanced technologies such as AI, robotics, and genome medicine. Together with their second UAE data center opening this year, Oracle is delivering cutting-edge cloud computing capabilities to support the digital transformation of UAE. I would like to thank the entire Oracle team for their dedication to enriching the quality of life within the Emirates and for joining ADA in driving the digital future of Abu Dhabi. I look forward to meaningful interactions with everyone today and wish you all a pleasant day ahead at this year's Oracle Open World Middle East Conference. Thank you very much. Please welcome Steve Dahib.
Yeah, thank you so much for joining us all here today in Dubai. It's a wonderful gathering. I think we had great success last year, and I've really been looking forward to the event this year. You know, it's interesting. We are coming into this event um, with delivering an incredible amount of innovation to the market, and we're seeing customer momentum across the entire Oracle Cloud. We have thousands of customers today that are driving breakthroughs and real changes for both work and life um, with Oracle technology today. And we look at some of the recent announcements like Autonomous Database and our AI-based applications. They represent not only some of the most important announcements we've ever made, but some of the fastest growing products in our history. And we believe that automated, call them autonomous technologies, will really help us reshape our approach to IT freeing our budgets, freeing our resources, and really freeing our imaginations to focus on innovation and growth in ways we've never seen before. And I think it's important as we go through today and we see these customer examples, our customers are really only limited by their imaginations in terms of what they can do with their technology. So it's really exciting to watch. Now, it's a particularly exciting time to be here in this region. Right? Companies in the Middle East, North Africa, and India are really leading with respect to leveraging emerging technology to drive great, great things. Now, this is actually the recent Business Insider magazine, uh, the, the, the golf uh, business. Um, the only reason I'm showing it is because it's really cool and it has my picture. Um, if it wasn't my picture, I definitely would not be showing this. That is actually true. But at the end of the day, it highlights our customers, their innovation, what they're doing in the region, and specifically how we help them do this. And it's important to start with our customers, their stories. We saw that great story in Cairo. I'll tell you another reason why this is so important to me is my family is from Egypt. And so my first time you know, being on a cover in a magazine in the Middle East, um, my mom told me to buy 100 copies and bring them home. So that's what I'm going to do. But it starts with these incredible stories of customers, and I want to start with another one. Uh, this is IBVI. Please join me in listening to their story. I love a challenge. I always have, even before I lost my sight. I lead a team of 12 people here at IBVI. Nearly all of us are blind or visually impaired. I'm sure most people think, what would I do if I were faced with not being able to see? I couldn't do it. I say, that's absolutely not true. At IBVI, we are in pursuit of what appear to be out of reach, a workspace where there are no boundaries imposed on our employees' abilities. Oracle Cloud application has transformed the way that we empower employees here at IBVI. I think that a lot of us don't recognize that the human animal is fierce and strong and we truly can overcome anything that gets thrown our way. So you're just a great example of how people are transforming themselves and transforming business. And behind every one of the stories is these people. It's their stories. It's about how they're breaking down barriers that they had in front of them. And behind every one of these great stories is the technology that enables them. Behind these stories is Oracle Cloud. And Oracle Cloud really is an incredible set of solutions that help our customers meet their needs. Um, and, and whether it's any industry, any size company, what they have in common is that they're using Oracle technology to fundamentally shift how they do business, how they think about customer experiences, employee experience, and fundamentally, again, help change work and life. You know, and as we talk about Oracle Cloud, we have to start with this transformation that's occurring. I mean, cloud really is changing everything. It's changing how businesses run and people work. It's creating new categories. It's disrupting existing categories. It's happening at this incredible pace, and it's here today. And what's important when we talk about transform, it's not just about moving to cloud. Like that is status quo. It's not about let me move my data and red space on your storage and, and just keep it there. It's not about moving the data. It's about what do I do with the data now that I moved it? 
It's not just about lifting and shifting applications to the cloud. It's how do I leverage the new set of capabilities that these applications provide out of box? Right, that's transformation. That's what we need to embrace. And when we talk about transformation, a lot of it is happening with respect to leveraging these emerging technologies that we talk about. Technologies like AI, like machine learning, like IoT, like blockchain, digital assistants. Right? They're permeating every aspect of work and life, from self-driving cars to precision agriculture, to personalized medicine, to smart cities that change the way we interact with the world around us. But I say what we're finding is these technologies are changing from being emerging to reality. Right? Companies are moving from outside of the sandbox to deploy real mission-critical applications that leverage these technologies. And Oracle is leading the way, not only providing platforms to develop upon these new technologies, but integrating these technologies into core offerings, which we'll talk about. And so the opportunities that cloud presents are real and present today. We provide the fundamental building blocks that customer requires in order to drive innovation and change. However, you know, with opportunity comes challenges. That's just the nature of opportunity. Right? If we're on a path that has no obstacles, sometimes it's just not worth following. And there's no challenges greater today than the risks that we can be exposed to. Right? As we become more connected, the threats become more real. With a larger surface area, the threats become increasingly complex and difficult to defend. And the bad guys are using these same emerging technologies to wage a highly sophisticated war against us. Let me just give you some real-world examples of these risks. These are very well-known breaches that have happened within the last couple years. We had Equifax, which was caused by an unpatched database. 143 million customer records were lost. Capital One, 100 million records. It was internal breach. It was data that was not encrypted. And 100 million records were lost. And in this case, the vendor said it performed as functioned. We do not believe that performing as function means you lose 100 million records. And then Supreme is actually a global powerhouse in biometrics. They lost 28 million biometric records, including fingerprints, iris scans, and other biometrics. And you know, God only knows what you could do with that kind of information. A couple other things that are really interesting. We often talk about the perimeter. How do we defend against external threats? But the truth is, in 70% of the cases, the breaches still happen internal to a company. So how do you think about encrypting that data, regardless of who has access to it to protect it? In 85% of the cases where a breach occurred, there was a patch already available for that breach before it happened. Now imagine a product that's self-patching and self-securing. And finally, the number is 100. What that number is, it's the number of times you have to get it right against the bad guys. You have to be right 100% of the time. They can only be right once. So how do we reconcile these seemingly competing forces of reducing costs, reducing risk, while at the same time driving innovation, getting insights into data in ways we never could before, and we can do that with autonomous. It allows us to reconcile these conflicting approaches so we can reduce cost, reduce risk, and drive innovation all at the same time. And we believe that it's the role of the technology provider to do the integration work for you, whether that's through automation, whether that's through services and support, because at the end of the day, it's important for you to focus on what matters the most to your company, whether that's driving operational efficiency, you know, customer experiences, internal employee experiences, right? Driving innovation in a faster time to market. These are the things that are critical to you. Let us do the hard work of the technology integration. Let us automate things like security. Let us help automate repetitive tasks that lie in applications as well as database and allow you to focus on the most important things to your business. And I get the opportunity to talk to many customers and the dialogue around cloud is changing. It went from, like, what's cloud? You know, why do I want to use it? To how? 
Help me with the how. I know there'll be some part of my business that leverages cloud, maybe all parts of my business leverage cloud. And so how do we think a thought, take a thoughtful approach together to understanding what you're trying to do and how we can best support you? And one of the ways we can do this is providing multiple paths to cloud. There is not a one-size-fits-all approach to cloud. Not all journeys are the same. Start, some might just be starting with applications. As I move applications to cloud, how do I connect that back to what I have on-prem? That's where platform comes in. Maybe it's DR or storage. Maybe it's an on-prem product that's like my first stepping point into a path to cloud. Whatever that path is, we provide a solution for you. And so how do we do it? When we talk about Oracle Cloud, we speak about cloud in a much more holistic way. There's sort of three core parts to our cloud. So as Philippe had talked about earlier today, the, the first is our AI-based applications. And this is where we've embedded intelligence directly into our applications. And we'll talk about the importance of that. Right? Next is our autonomous database where integrated machine learning provides the world's only self-driving, self-securing, and self-repairing database. Foundational to all of our cloud services, apps, platform, autonomous, AI-based applications, is our infrastructure. It's a second-generation infrastructure that's purpose-designed for generation two cloud. And finally, all of this together is supported by our platform solutions. Again, there's customers that continue to buy on-prem, and this provides complete choice in terms of how you might deploy as you move to cloud, and also provides a future-proof path to cloud. So now what I'd like to do is go through each one of these layers and give some examples as we go through, and then I'll be joined later by some customers. I'm really excited to share their stories with you. So when we think of intelligent business applications, this is a complete integrated suite of applications that provide modern capabilities and experiences. We'll hear about the experiences that we offer today. And we do this via integrating AI, IoT, blockchain. We have a personalized UI to help improve that experience. Right? And when we look at the fundamental suite, it covers every major technology product for the enterprise, from ERP to supply chain to HCM, to customer experience. And what's really incredible is with integrated AI, we can do some amazing things out of box. This is built into the applications. You do not have to take AI and build this yourselves. We've already done the work. So for instance, in ERP, we can automatically detect fraud via audits. For supply chain, we can actually look at patterns, look at data, and understand what's the optimum yields What's the optimum routes to market? For HCM, we can look at pools of thousands of candidates and determine what's the best fit for this role. And for uh, customer experience, we can do personalized recommendations, a suite of other things. Right? And what's interesting is this is happening today. Go out on the show floor and experience these products. You're gonna hear from customers today that are using these products. In the last year alone, We've processed 623 million route recommendations leveraging AI. This is in the products today. 60 million product recommendations via email campaign. We are driving 2x growth in conversion rates for marketing. Right? From a sales perspective, almost 5 million recommendations for next best sales actions. So this is in practice today. This is available in our applications. This is real value, leveraging the power of AI, IoT, blockchain, and others that we're delivering today. The other piece that I'll say is important is the power of the platform and applications together. It's critical that you have these together, where you can move, connect, and enrich applications with an underlying integration platform, where I can automate and visualize insights across apps and data, across on-prem and multi-cloud, right? Where we can secure access across on-prem and cloud as well. This is the critical piece of working with the vendor that has the platform layer as well as the application layer. Now we have many customers today across the globe that are using some or all of our applications. One great example is a local company, Precision. 
They are in Dubai. They are a manufacturer um, of products, packaging products. They produce millions of products a month. They use manufacturing to automate processes with IoT and AI. They use procurement to streamline and automate the purchasing. And they found a 40% reduction in purchase order approval times. This is a great local story in our host country. Uh, this is Precision. Precision is actually a manufacturing company based in UAE. We manufacture the molds and dyes. We manufacture the plastic packaging products for major players like PNG, Unilever. Precision was running on a legacy system. We had that issue of scaling up. We had issue of process inefficiencies. We decided that the cloud would be one of the best solution because that comes with a lot of flexibility, a lot of agility. We understood that Oracle as a cloud leader in the market has got much more capabilities compared to SAP or any other product, like uh, even um, integrating that with uh, the manufacturing shop floor in terms of the smart manufacturing and artificial intelligence or IoT. Everything coming embedded in one package was much more efficient and uh, easy to use. It all is integrated and it comes as a service. So that's the beauty of it. You just need to subscribe it and you can start using it. And also it is quite cost effective. It's just a great example of all this technology at work. So the next layer that I want to talk about is the Oracle Autonomous Database. And this is absolutely a new category of database that's based on machine learning technology. It's fully automated. So when we talk about being fully automated and self-driving, what do we mean? We mean it's self-driving, so it can automatically provision, configure, tune, scale. It automatically secures itself. It can automatically patch, encrypt. It can automatically res uh, monitor, respond, and remediate. I mean, this is critically important as we think about these environments. And it's self-repairing where it can auto-update, supporting uh, four nines and a five's availability with less than two and a half minutes a month of planned as well as unplanned downtime. And then how do these sort of category attributes relate to benefits? Well, again, I can reduce costs because I'm saving the admin costs by up to 80%, if not more. I'm reducing risks, and we saw whether it's malicious behavior or it's human error, there are real costs associated with breaches. And then if I'm not spending my time on administration, those resources are focused on innovation. They're aligned with the business units, and they're driving change internally as well as externally. Now, this product comes in two flavors. So there's the autonomous data warehouse, where we've made it extremely easy to provision databases and to launch data warehouses in seconds. Collect all the data, aggregate the data, load and go in seconds. This is unheard of before. And then with our traditional transaction processing, we're delivering levels of performance and security that the market has never seen. From a choice perspective, as I said, there's thoughtful paths to cloud that we support. And so we support everything from a data management perspective, spanning from open source to Oracle on-prem to Exadata Cloud, a customer which allows us to deploy our cloud behind your firewall to Autonomous and Exadata in the cloud. And again, we are lucky to have so many companies that are using Autonomous Data Warehousing and Oracle database technologies to drive real value today. We spoke of the cloud at customer. Uh, this is a customer like AT&T who is using it. What they were able to do was move 2,000 Oracle databases to clouded customer. They found that they were able to do 50% improvement in performance with respect to procurement and deployment times, and they're able to improve their efficiency, improve their performance, their overall internal customer services, and they did this with a simple migration to Oracle Cloud. The next example is Sky. Sky is a, a Brazil-based telecom provider um, they were developing marketing campaigns, and they needed a high-performance data warehouse to actually help them run this. When they moved to Autonomous Data Warehouse, they saw a 90% reduction in time for their marketing app, a 60% uh, improvement in cost savings, and 90% of IT time was saved and put towards much more, as you're going to hear, much more important tasks. 
This is a great story about transformation. This is Sky. Em um país de proporções continentais como o Brasil, com uma geografia tão complexa e uma população tão desigual, informação muitas vezes é privilégio. É por isso que na Sky a gente trabalha para democratizar o acesso à informação. E a Oracle entendeu a nossa missão. Com serviços de nuvem e automação, ela garante estabilidade, performance e preço competitivo. E nos ajuda a chegar onde ninguém mais chega. A gente leva o noticiário, a previsão do tempo, para dentro da floresta. Filme, documentário para o meio do sertão. Conteúdo educativo, jogos olímpicos, cultura de vários países para escolas isoladas. E isso transforma a vida das pessoas. Com o OCI e com o Autônomos, você foca no que tem que focar, pagando só pelo que você usa. Até agora, já foi uma redução de 90% em time to market e uma economia de mais de 60% em infraestrutura. A gente multiplica juntos o poder da informação. Isso é transformação. All right, this is transformation. I don't think there's a better example than that. Next, I'd like to talk about the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. This is the foundational layer that our own cloud runs on. It's a second generation cloud. It's the foundation for all of our autonomous capabilities. All of our core applications run on it. 40 out of 60 of our GBU products are currently running on it and moving to it as well. And we look at the state of our cloud infrastructure. It's about rapid global data center growth, and I'll share with you what's happening there. It's about growing momentum in the ISV ecosystem. As Philippe had mentioned, it's about an open cloud with Microsoft and VMware. And it's also the foundation for our autonomous capabilities with respect to the operating system, where we've recently announced an autonomous Linux operating system that gives you all the benefits of autonomous database. So when we look at the cloud infrastructure, there is sort of four key areas of differentiation. High performance, compute, and scale, because we focus on these next generation workloads, as well as Gen 1 workloads. We understand that the difference between Gen 2 cloud and Gen 1 cloud is going to be around governance, security, and control. And we also understand that this has to simply support migrations to cloud. So we are absolutely focused on making the path as simple as possible to move to cloud. We have a whole set of services from AI to traditional compute, to networking, to storage, to network security, which is still obviously very important, to cloud native tools spanning open source, container native, and others for people to develop and deploy in the cloud. And we had mentioned this earlier, but it's important to understand our strategy. We've come from a heterogeneous on-prem world, meaning we had to work and run alongside everybody. We ran on everybody's hardware. We worked with all the different software applications. And we've taken the same exact strategy and we're moving it to cloud. So we understand that it's going to be a multi-cloud environment. We had customers asking us and Microsoft to simplify the migration. So if they might want to move a Microsoft footprint to cloud and an Oracle footprint to cloud, I mean, together, we're in like 99% of the enterprises. So we've made that simple to do. Also, if you want to leverage best in breed, I'm a Power BI user, but I want to run that on autonomous data warehouse, we allow you to do that too. So it's a very open approach. From a VMware perspective, we know a lot of enterprises have virtualized instances. You're able to lift and ship those as is and move them to cloud. So again, we've made that very simple. I can now leverage what I've built for VM, and I can move that, and then I can leverage all of the Oracle OCI, performance, security, and autonomous capabilities. So this really is a game changer for us. Um, from a global infrastructure perspective, we announced that open world rapid build out of our global data center presence, where by the end of this year, we'll have 36 Oracle data center regions. That equates to one new data center region every 23 days. So we have an aggressive build out to meet the demands of all of our customers. Now, when we talk about a Gen 2 cloud, it's much more than just infrastructure services. For Gen 2 cloud, it's these important platform services that span app dev, that span integration, that span analytics, and span security. So for AppDev, we of course support Oracle Java, but we support cloud native and open source as well. From an integration perspective, it's about connecting data and apps. 
Oracle as well as non-Oracle. It's about analytics where we can do rich visualization of analytics. We can do analytics based on machine learning, and we're actually rolling out automatic narration where we can use natural language to actually create a story around the data you're analyzing. It's actually amazing, and I encourage you all to see it in the demo. And then finally, from a security perspective, it really is active defense. It is about watching, it is about monitoring, it's about responding and remediating, doing all of this automatically. No other vendor is doing this in the market today. You have many different customers that are using our technology across all regions. Um, I'd highlight McAfee, they are a security company. Um, they protect, obviously, millions of computers and users. Uh, they are the leader in security information, and they were transitioning to SaaS running on OCI. They leveraged a Kafka bare metal, which allowed for 5x greater scale as they moved. They saw a 16% increase in performance, and they also found it to be four times less expensive than the alternative at Amazon. So great example there. Uh, ESA is a local example. It's a UAE-based travel system. They're serving 26 airlines and 275 million passengers. They moved from a mission-critical reservation app, and they moved that to OCI. They saw a 12x performance improvement compared to what they were seeing on Amazon, and a 40% performance improvement over what they saw on-prem, and did it with less cost. I mean, so think about it. Now we talk moving to cloud, and we're seeing greater performance in cloud than we would have saw on-prem. That's a game changer. So now we are privileged to have customers joining us on stage um, that will talk to us about their own experiences with Oracle Cloud. First is the Abu Dhabi Customs Trade Agency with almost 2,000 employees. They use HCM to automate processes with AI, reducing human error and bias and creating an incredible experience for their customers. They limited one hour of day from their administration lifting productivity and focusing on innovation, and they also enhance their trade security revenue for themselves as well as their employee experience. So with that, I am honored to introduce Dr. Ibrahim Hassan al Khajej. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm really excited to share this story. Um, you know, this is an incredible story that you're driving. And I thought first we could talk about a background and overview of your organization and what you guys are driving today. Perspective. Yeah. We play a very big role in the government as we are, you know, our business is about inspections. And here we focus on security. Security is one of the big, very important thing in the government. So while our people, they are the first line we have to focus on our people because they are the one producing the security out of it. And the same time as we are the first impression, we are the first impression of the government. So we have a responsible of every single one coming to UAE yeah. so as a customer satisfaction perspective. And we are responsible of the trade, of the economy. That is the business. Trade facilitation is one of the important roles. So that's why our investment, the only asset we have, they are the people. So we have to empower our people. And at the same time, while we are equipping our people with the right digital tools to raise the productivity and the capability of the people, that we will have increase in security and trade facilitation at the same time. No, that's fantastic. Now, from what I understand from an HCM perspective, for, you are the first customer in the world yep. to use the HCM, the digital assistance for HCM, and you're the first government entity in the Middle East to actually deploy the full HCM model. So, this is incredible and incredible leadership, and we're thankful for that. Can you talk about your HCM strategy and what you're doing? Yes, actually this is, I'm thanking all the government and all the high management that they supported in us. And everyone was supporting to get number one. As our government and leaders, they always focus on number one because you always need to aim high that you can reach to the target. If we aim low, we will always go, our target will be low energy, and low energy we will target lower level of achievement. So Oracle Consultant team, they did a great job in doing this achievement to be number one, and number one, and actually one of the achievements that they did, 
that I'm appreciating a lot called Oracle Consultant Perspective, we become the fastest deployment HCM wow. with Oracle Consultant in the Middle East. Fantastic. So they did a very great job that. In the beginning, no one believed in it. But as long as we start changing the belief of people, we start focusing on the achievement, we reach to that. In the beginning of, the two, of 2019, we started the transformation of Abu Dhabi Custom. Where we had, I saw lots of slides, we all talk about data. Yeah. So our DG and our top management, they always focus on data, 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 data. We need numbers, we need analytics that, due to the data, we can take the right decision. And at the same time, we can know where to spot exactly and where to target to re-engineer the process or improve the technology by having innovative idea. Yeah. So we started putting our roadmap from project management perspective, and we have 53 main projects where they are split down on 14 programs, and we focus on six main pillars to achieve our vision, that is world-class customs. Yeah. And the six pillars, we focus on security, we focus on revenue, we focus on trade facilitation, mm. and the other three perspectives that Oracle played a big part of it is a process perspective, human capital perspective, and technology. And all of them will be built into innovating, innovation. So innovation is very important. And there where we start working on the innovation ideas and developing our technologies to equip our people. Because the time we equip our people, we will have more security and more trade facilitation. And that's where it's very important. This transformation, almost a big part of it, it's done. And the second part, sustainability plan, is 2020 and the rest yeah. of it. That's fantastic. Incredible leadership. You. Can you talk about your vision with respect to AI and HCM? AI. So mainly, our government focus on AI, artificial intelligence. We are focusing on artificial intelligence and whatever innovation tool technology perspective. So going forward, long time ago, our government focused on one thing. They were saying, we want every single government service to be on one mobile. Ah. So according to that, by today we are implementing this, and most of the government entities they start going on mobile, because our focus, if we say, I'm gonna, we're gonna focus on mobile response, and at the same time we're gonna focus on digital assistant and analytics. Yeah. Why we choose Oracle? Oracle HCM Cloud. Firstly, it's on cloud, embedded artificial intelligence, embedded machine learning and you have embedded analytics that it was not on EBS on-premise. Yeah. So the analytical tool that, the second analytic tool application is coming in quarter one by now, and I'm gonna have a meeting today that we will transform to the analytic tool that it's another project by itself. So we will focus on sustaining our data on the cloud, and at the same time we will transfer all the transactional from the help desk perspective that there is a human behind the seat right. to the second perspective that is digital assistant. For example, we are having many other projects with artificial intelligence embedded, like RPA from Automation Anywhere, we have IQ bots, we have virtual reality from training perspective, we have wireless attendance. All of those are feeding our database. Yeah. The database is the autonomous, and that's one of my favorite words ever. <laughs> I love autonomous, because our vision in HR perspective is to become autonomous HR, and that's our project for 2020. I love it, that's fantastic. We built that in 2019. Yeah. 2020, we will start focusing to become autonomous HR. That there is no driver behind the scene like Tesla. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now, can you tell us, so that's AI machine learning. Just quickly, from a Abu Dhabi customs perspective, what's next for your organization? Exactly. From Abu Dhabi perspective, we are focusing mainly on the mobile response, as we said, digitalization. We are focusing more on artificial intelligence, that we need to go more toward digital transformation. So Abu Dhabi Custom, now we will focus from HR, as we said, we will focus on autonomous HR. So we will go toward autonomous HR, that we will start focusing how to reduce human errors from the perspective of human interference. We will transfer the human interference more to the digital to become a robotic or a digital assistant behind the scene that they are serving our employee. And we put lots of indicators that we can indicate how many people are using the robotic and how many people are using the help desk application in cloud. Fantastic. Because mainly we had EBS, we had manual transaction and EBS self-silver. By 2019, we found that 90% we went on help desk, that is automation application in the cloud, HCM. And by 2020, we are focusing on reducing the 90% to 20% and increasing 80% digital assistant, where we can put all policy procedure and the Q&A 
and the same time the skills skills approval approval from the digital assistant perspective it will be by end of february but we start using it that's why we are the first in the world so we start using this model that we will transfer employee from help desk 48 hour responsive per request they will go to a few seconds that is the robotic Fantastic. and from overall perspective as we said we are focusing on innovative ideas innovation from technology perspective and overall going in the innovation perspective for Abu Dhabi custom as an overall, not only HR. Fantastic. Well, it sounds like it's going to be an exciting year and we'd love to be back here in a year and hear how your journey went and we're excited to yeah. be on it with you. Hopefully by next open world, you will find more results by us. Inshallah. Thanks. Thank you Thanks. so much. Thank you. Take care. I mean, it's really, really great story. Next, I'm joined by Delight. They're a Kenya-based uh, global leader providing solar power to 100 million people in 70 countries. We'll talk about how they've saved customers $4 billion in energy-related expenses. They use autonomous data warehouse to scale operations and demand and do so with zero data admin. And it's just such a wonderful story. I'm really excited to be joined on stage. Next, by Jeremiah Oshien. Uh, Jeremiah, please join me. How are you, sir? Jumbo. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can, can you start by, I mean, this is such a wonderful story, and I think it fits into everything we've been talking about with respect to impacting lives and driving transformation. Can you talk a, a bit about Delight, what you do, and how you're helping to drive this transformation? Thank you, uh, Steve. Um, Delight is a global leader, as you have rightly said, in solar home systems. Uh, we are based uh, out of uh, Kenya, but you know, we are operating globally. Um, our business model is very unique. We, uh, we go with the pay-go model, so pay-as-you-go model, uh, where we allow customers really in the bottom of the pyramid, the people who are off-grid, um, to pay just some deposit of about $20, and then daily they can buy tokens of 50 cent, US cents and to be able to afford light. Um, so we're basically transforming lives and transforming the way people use and pay for energy. As you can imagine, uh, because of that kind of business model, we generate a lot of transactional data. And um, in our environment, we were basically a greenfield. Um, so what we'll, what we'll do is we'll generate all this data, mostly overnight, and we put them together uh, there would be a team of 16 people, you know, cr crunching data and putting data together to be able to have visibility of, uh, of the business. Great. So now can you talk about autonomous data warehouse and how you're using it today? Yeah, so um, we, we then decided to, you know, to basically make things better. So we were using now autonomous uh, data, data warehouse yeah. and Oracle Analytics to bring all this data together uh, to be able to crunch them and uh, have visibility of what was going on. Um, we were able to bring in the multiple data sources. Um, the, the key concerns that uh, I, I had were scalability, elasticity, security, reliability, and uh, accuracy, which were very, Fantastic. very important for us. Fantastic. And now, what is, is, is sort of next with respect to the next steps for Autonomous Data Warehouse? In automation, what are you looking at next? Yeah, so so basically, like I've said, um, what we're doing at the uh, in the beginning was to just lay that foundation to be able to speed up the reporting and analytics. Uh, we're able to reduce that that 16 number that I've talked about by about 75 percent to just about four people. We're able to reduce the amount of time uh, taken to generate reports from about 12 hours to just a, a few minutes, so that at the, just the top of a, of a button you're able to see all the data. Now, the next bit that I'm looking at is to go into machine learning yeah. and artificial intelligence. And what I like to look at is to bring in data from external sources as well. So government data, weather data, data from all sources, from NGOs and these kind of sectors, to be able to properly understand our customer, to properly understand our environment, to be able to have proper data-driven and targeted uh, kind of business. Fantastic. Now, what's next for Delight? It sounds like such an important organization. Just maybe quickly tell Yeah, so, so, so for Delight, uh, the future is really, really exciting. Um, as, as you rightly said at the beginning, we were 
targeting to impact 100 million lives uh, when we started in 2007. Uh, we targeted to achieve that in the year 2020, and we have achieved it. The next beat is to target to impact 1 billion lives mm. in the next 10 years. So basically doing what we have done in the last 13 years annually for the next nine years to be able to achieve uh, 1 billion lives at the end of 2030. Fantastic. For us to be able to do that, obviously, we'll need um, to be able to scale. And um, I'm happy, and I'm, uh, from what I've seen so far, I know that Oracle will be able to help us to drive that particular growth. And so we're, very we're honored to times do so. Ahead. Thank you so much, Jeremiah. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. Great. So as you can see, what's interesting is we're driving real outcomes for our customers. Um, before I leave, there's just one more story I want to share with you. Again, the, the story of incredible outcomes. Um, this is Narayana Health. They are a um, hospital in India. They serve 20,000 patients a day. And they're focused on saving costs so they can put every dollar back towards patient care. A great another example of people using our technology to drive change. Uh, here is Narayana. One out of 140 children born anywhere in the world has a heart problem. Narayana Health started with a single mission, to build a hospital that would never have to turn anyone away for lack of funds. NH sees 20,000 patients a day, and they generate billions of lines of data. All our data system is on a cloud. Oracle helps us crunch all that data and enables our decision makers to run a very cost-efficient organization. What technology allows us to do is to bring standardization. And standardization can reduce error, it can improve quality, and ultimately make healthcare safer. I'm a doctor. My job is saving lives and helping people. But when you run a hospital with a wafer-thin margin, you need to be very careful about your financial health. We need to have reliable data, real time so you can take major decisions. We believe in God, but for everything else, we need data. I love it. It's like the best line in the video, but you see how important it is. And then for us here at Oracle, again, it's very important for us to understand the why. Why are you doing the things you're doing? And ultimately, that's how we can match up with the how, how we can be in the best position to support what you're trying to achieve. And I'd say well, with Oracle, again, understand that there are 150,000 employees that wake up every day thinking and working hard to help support your journeys. This is what we do. There's so many employees you're going to see at this event. They're all dedicated to your support. And the last comment I'll make is that we talk a lot about AI and machine learning and robots. And I'd say in a world of automation, where manual tasks can be delegated to machines, things like empathy, things like aspiration, things like creativity remain human pursuits. We saw so many examples of that today. They remain our pursuit together, and we're very, very proud to be on this journey with you. So with that, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Um, thank you. I'll be uh, signing copies of the magazines uh, later on, if anybody wants one. No, I'm kidding. Um, now, I'm really excited to introduce Amanda Jobbins. We've talked about this technology, but she is going to present it in a way that's exciting and makes it real and shows, really, the art of what's possible. So please join me in welcoming Amanda to the <laughs> stage. Thank you, Steve. Great job. Uh, thank you. I love your line about Everybody here wakes up every day thinking about how to help you achieve your aspirations for your business. Absolutely. So I thought, to your point, maybe we could use some of the technology to show you how we're applying the technology. Absolutely. So we're going to have some uh, bees joining us on stage. Bees. bees. Some honeybees. And we're going to talk about how analytics and big data can be applied to helping honeybees thrive uh, in our in our economies and in our environments right now. Oh, so, uh, I'm super scared of bees, so I'm well, going to okay, take no off problem. and let All you right. do this. Well, thanks All very right, much. All right. Thank you so much. See you later. Thank right. you, Good Steve. Luck. Hello, everyone. So my name is Amanda Jobbins. I am the SVP of Demand Generation and Marketing 
here at Oracle International, and I am also a Dubai resident. I moved here um, a year ago from London, and I'm loving living in the UAE. So it's a thrill and delight to have so many dignitaries and senior business leaders with us here at the World Trade Center. Thank you for coming. What I wanted to do was um, actually take you on a journey, a journey with the honeybees. Now, why should you care about honeybees? You should care because they pollinate 70% of our food crops. Without honeybees, we will face starvation, quite literally. So I want to bring this to you in an innovative way. So I'm going to take you through the journey of a honeybee hive through augmented reality today. So I have an augmented reality magical assistant who's going to join me on stage. Simon, do you want to come on up? So Simon is going to bring up a honeybee hive for you all to take a look at. Now, here in Dubai, um, we import 95% of our honeybees to pollinate the crops that, that do grow here in the UAE. But admittedly, in this part of the world, uh, much of the food produce is imported from other countries, from Egypt, from Pakistan, amongst others. And if you're wondering what kinds of crops honeybees pollinate, they pollinate coffee and cocoa, strawberries and blueberries, as well as making sure we have a huge array of beautiful flowering plants on our planet, something we all enjoy. So here we go, here is our honeybee hive. You see that? So on the left-hand side of the screen, from your perspective, you'll see our KPI panel. So like any business, like your business, it's important to monitor the health of your business. And here, we're monitoring the health of the honeybee hive. So what we can see at the top is an alert dial, we can see a sensor that is recording the weight of the hive, because that will tell us things about the health of the hive. And we're also monitoring audio signals, the audio signals of bees. You will know, of course, that bees make a lot of noise. They buzz. We'll hear some bees in a minute. They buzz, and you can tell a lot about what's going on in a honeybee hive from the noise the bees make. And finally, we're looking at the temperature. During the summer, the temperature of a honeybee hive should be between about 25 degrees and 34 degrees Celsius. And what we can see here is that this is a healthy hive. Weight looks normal, audio signals look normal, temperature is normal. Now, at the top of the hive there, you're seeing some data signals. Essentially, on these hives, we're placing sensors together with our partner, the World Bee Project. Now, the World Bee Project contacted Oracle to talk about how we could connect hives around the world and learn more about what is making bees thrive or die. It's a very sad fact that up to 40% of the honeybee populations in the world today are facing extinction. So this is an existential crisis for all of us, not just the honeybees, and we need to find out why. So we need to compare this data between different countries. So on top of this honeybee hive that we've built with the World Bee Project, you can see the data being transported back from the weather sensor. So we're combining the data about the bees and the data about the weather and environmental conditions, and we can also integrate other data sources about what's happening in the local ecosystem. And uh, as you might have noticed, for those of you who came in a couple of days ago, uh, we've had a bit of rain here in Dubai, so I think it is about to rain. Yeah, there it goes, should have bought my umbrella. Wow, it's a big storm. Anyone who was on the Sheikh Zayed Road two days ago will know about the, the big storm we had. Bees don't actually fly in the rain, by the way. They go back into their hive, very sensible. So let's take a look inside the hive and learn a little bit more about the role of honeybees. So let's open up, if we can, our honeybee hive. Oh, hang on a second, the temperature's dropping. Something's wrong. Ah, so if the temperature of the hive drops, you'll remember I said this could be an indicator of something going wrong in the hive, hive a hive health issue. It could be that the queen has died, for example. The, queen, the, the honeybee hive only has one queen. They need the queen. So this is, a, no, this is not a good signal, the temperature dropping. And you can see how the KPIs can alert us and the beekeepers, most importantly, to these changing conditions so that they can take remediatory action. Now, I think we've got, yeah, we're back to normal. That's good. Phew. So let's take a look inside the honeybee hive now and learn a little bit about the bees. A honeybee hive is a complex organization, much like our businesses. And here you can see the main player, the queen bee. You will have heard about the queen before, I'm sure. You can see her there. So the queen bee only has two functions in life. 
Uh, she has to lay fertilized eggs. She's the only bee that can lay fertilized eggs. And she emits a pheromone, a smell, a scent, that unites all the bees in the colony and keeps hive stability. It also attracts male honeybees when she leaves the hive to go on a mating flight. Secondly, there are the nurse bees. You can see them there surrounding the queen, and we're going to talk about them a little bit more shortly because some of the changes in their behavior can tell us important things about the hive as well. The nurse bees, as you can imagine, their role is to look after the queen, a bit like a personal trainer or your nutritionist if you're lucky enough to have one. Thirdly, we have the drones. The drones are male bees, and they only have one job in life. Any ideas what that job might be? It's to mate with the queen. Other than that, he can just sit about and have a good time. He doesn't even have a sting, so he can't even protect the hive, unfortunately. But very, very important that the drone mates with the queen to ensure the survival of the honeybee colony. Finally, then, we have the worker bees. Now, the worker bees are our multitaskers, much like all of us. They take on many different roles in their lifetime, in fact. They'll start off life perhaps cleaning the honeycomb or, or nursing smaller bees. They will clean the honeycomb. They will search for food. They will find new locations for a new hive. And they will also protect the hive from any kind of security threat. So they are amazing, amazing creatures, the, the worker bees. They're all female. And apparently, some research has shown that when they change job, they can actually get younger and more intelligent. So I think there's still more we need to learn from the honeybees. So these are the roles of the honeybees in the hive. Now, if you are a beekeeper, it is very important that you keep your bees. Why? Because your crop requires bees to pollinate, as we spoke about earlier. So one of the signals that we can detect by putting a sensor on the hive is whether the bee colony is about to swarm. Now, a bee colony swarms if they want to reproduce. It's sort of a reproduction of the, of the, of the whole hive. And they do it when they run out of space in the hive. Now, we're able to tell. You can see some signals there on the KPIs on our, on our alert screen. We've got some signals telling us it's pre-swarm activity. How do we know this? We know it because when the hive is about to swarm, when the bees are about to swarm, the bees put the queen on a diet because the queen's going to have to fly some distance to go and find a new location for the colony. So the nurse bees that surround the queen, you remember seeing them earlier, they're flapping their wings extra hard at night. and We can pick up that change in acoustic signal, and it will tell us up to two or three weeks ahead of time that the bees are about to swarm. And this is a problem, as I say, the beekeeper does not want to lose their bees. So in this case, unfortunately, we only just got the signal, and it looks like the bees are going to swarm. Here they go. Good thing I wore my beekeeping jacket. Wow, there they are. Watch out, everybody. So there was some incredible work done by... Oh, that noisy today. By... <laughs> by a gentleman called Carl von Frisch, who is an Austrian scientist, and he found out that the bees do a special dance called the Waggle Dance. He, in fact, won a Nobel Prize for this discovery uh, that enable the bees to communicate where they want to go, either direction to a flower or direction to a new hive location or a possible good site for a new hive. So these bees are buzzing around, and uh, they've seen this lovely tree over here, so I think they're going to go and settle on that tree. Why don't you come over here, bees? and they can have a little rest on the branch while they work out where their new home is going to be. Now, if I'm a beekeeper and I had been alerted, even if I got this alert late in the day, I would be able to go to where the bees have settled and scoop them into a new hive and thereby keep them. Now, it was interesting to me to find out that here in Dubai, we do have an indigenous bee, the Arabian bee, and it actually lives in nature. It hasn't been domesticated, and it has open honey combs. And when it swarms uh, and lands, perhaps because of large urbanization here on our balcony in our apartment, you know, quite often people might call pest control or something and, and try to get the bees destroyed. So I'm very keen to tell all of you that you spread the message and tell your friends not to do that. We need the bees and we need them to prosper.
So uh, we, we've rescued these bees and put them back in the hive, and I think our hive uh, metrics are back to normal. So one of the other things that um, threatens bee life are uh, pests uh, or predators. And there are a number of these predators, and one of the most dangerous for the bee colony is the Asian hornet. Now, through visual analytics uh, with the World Bee Project, we were able to identify when a hornet is approaching the hive. The hornet would kill all the bees and take all the honey and will destroy the hive. And here comes a hornet, I think. We're just picking it up on our visual analytics right now. Do we hear it? Take a look. There you go. There's the hornet. OK. We don't like the hornet. He's going to threaten our hive. So now, if these are Asian bees, they can actually defend themselves against the hornet. They will surround it, and they will heat it to death. Not very nice. But bees can survive at a temperature two degrees higher than a hornet. So they will actually do something called thermoballing and kill the hornet. But European bees can't defend themselves against this predator. So the beekeeper could take some preventative action, perhaps put something over the covering of the hive, or come and get rid of the, the hornet, himself, him or herself. Now, the visual analytics here, we found in working with the World Bee Project, it was quite an expensive way to do the analytics. And in fact, because the hornet flaps its wings more slowly than bees, we can in fact pick up that it's a hornet just through an audio signal. So uh, in this case, uh, it looks like the bees have seen off the hornet, and uh, all is well. I think they're, they're expelling him from the hive, so that's good news. There must be some Asian bees there, I think. So we've talked about the pre-swarm. We've talked about security threats. And one of the other ways that we need to get data from this hive into a database so that we can analyze it something called the Global Hive Network I was talking about earlier, which flows its data into the Oracle Autonomous Database, where we could use analytics to analyze it. One of the other ways we need to get data into that database is through visual inspection. So there are some things only a beekeeper can tell when they actually look at their hive. So Oracle, together with the World Bee Project, developed a digital assistant. Steve was just talking about digital assistants. And we developed one for the World Bee Project. It's called the Bee Bot. Um, and so let's take a look at how that works. I'll be the beekeeper in this story. So I'm going to do a, a hive inspection now. So let's start up the uh, chatbot. Welcome to the Bee Bot Assistant. I am listening. What would you like to do? I'd like to do a brood inspection, please. Just to make sure I understand, you'd like to record your brood status? Yes, please. Which beehive do you want to record? I bought my London one, Chelsea 2. Let's record your beehive's brood. Do you see eggs? Yes, I can see some eggs. Please tell me the volume of the drone cells in your beehive. Is it low, medium, or high? The drone cells are low. Please tell me which brood pattern it is from the following options. Very patchy, a little spotty or compact and uniform? Uh, they're compact and uniform. Can you see larvae? Yes, I can see larvae. I am about to record the brood inspection and I want to make sure I got it right. Beehive Chelsea 2, brood eggs spotted, yes, brood larvae spotted, yes, brood pattern, compact and uniform, drone cells low. Is it all correct? Yes, that's correct. Recording your brood was a success. Also, remember I can record your queen if spotted. Anything else today? Not today, thank you. Thanks for using Beebot. Hope to hear from you soon. You definitely will. Fantastic, eh? So you can imagine if you're operating in any environment where you need to wear protective clothing or where handling a mobile phone or taking notes, data points, uh, a digital assistant such as this can be invaluable. So this is the other way we can get data, not just into our applications, for example, give me an expense report in our Oracle applications, but also to ingest data to a global analytics project such as the WellBee project.
So this is obviously the data from a single hive, but I've been talking about the um, World Bee Project's Global Hive Network Initiative. And that's where Oracle has begun to work with the World Bee Project. It is our aspiration together that around the world, every beehive, every beehive is connected to the Global Hive Network. If we can do this and take all the data points from all those hives, put them into the Oracle database, apply Analytics Cloud, we, together with researchers and scientists, can find out what is making bee colonies thrive. We can spot particular trends in the growth of certain types of crops, something called precision apiculture. And we can essentially make sure that food security is maintained. This is also a way to maintain the livelihoods of the millions and millions of smallholder farmers that exist around the world. In India, nearly 600 million small farmers alone are relying on bee pollination of their crops. So by taking the one million data points from the hive, putting it into the Oracle Autonomous Database, we're able to make that information then available to the researchers and scientists who are studying this area so that they can draw those important conclusions and findings and share that information with governments around the world and other farmers and people in the agricultural industry as well. So with that, I hope you have found the uh, bees as inspiring as I have and everyone here at Oracle has. The World Bee Project has a booth in uh, the section four of the trade show hall. And if you would like to be involved, they would love a donation. You can go to worldbeeproject.org and make a donation, or you can go and visit them at the booth. Um, for those of you that live here in Dubai, you might want to go to Hatta. There are some uh, bee sites there where uh, we're trying to develop a Dubai bee, as I mentioned earlier. The World Bee Project would also love if any of you from your corporations would like to sponsor or get involved with the program, perhaps put a beehive on top of your office, as we're doing at Oracle as well. But I hope this has inspired you with the art of the possible around taking data from around the globe and what you can achieve by putting it in an incredible, fast database like the Oracle Autonomous Database and give that information to people who can help save both the pollinators, the people, and the planet. Thank you very much for your attendance.